I'm looking at the talks and I think it's interesting that kind of the student talks are full of hope and excitement about the future and the faculty talks are going to be not. <laughs> um, I'm giving this talk because when I, when I heard this event announced about the future and, and what's going to come and what's going to happen, as a computer science person, I watch a lot of movies and I see a lot of TV shows and I see a lot of people talking about what's going to come and what's going to happen and what all is going to be going on in the future. So you know about the robot butlers, you know about, we, we, uh, you saw the stream before about the bionic hand that can do things. Um, you've been watching the news, you know about the Google glasses that you can put on your head and the Google will search for things for you. Which is all nice and it's all neat and it's all coming, but as you may have guessed, I am a cynical pessimist. And as a cynical pessimist, when I think about technology in the future, I think about this. Specifically, I think about this. <laughs> that is Microsoft telling you, hang on, I'm working. And if you've ever had this happen, you know that when Microsoft tells you this, it may be working for a minute, or it may be working for an hour, or it may be working forever. And I don't want you to think this is just a Microsoft problem. If you're a Mac person, there's the spinning beach ball of death. Um, and if it goes on for a while, you get a window like this that says Windows Explorer is not responding. And if you look at these options closely, which nobody really does, it's just, you know, oh no, my program crashed. Um, your th the three options they give you are check for a solution and restart the problem, which means look online and hope that starting over fixes things. There's close the program, which means I think this is going to run forever and oh well, kill it. <laughs> and my favorite is wait for the program to respond, which is Boy, I really, really hope I don't have to kill my program and lose my 10-page paper. Maybe waiting five more minutes, magic will happen and this thing will stop. <laughs> so wouldn't it be awesome if instead of this window, we got a window that popped up that said, yeah, this thing is going to stop. Have faith. Just wait a few more minutes. Don't crash your paper. Or alternately, yeah, you're screwed. This program's going to run forever. Time to kill things. Wouldn't it be nice if Windows would pop up and tell you that? Or said a little more generally, wouldn't it be nice if someone would write a program, those damn computer scientists, wouldn't it be nice <laughs> if someone would write a program to tell you whether your machine was really hanging and was stuck or would eventually unfreeze? Well, I'm here to tell you that is what we call undecidable. Undecidable basically means can't write the program to solve this problem. Okay? Um, an undecidable problem means it's impossible for anyone, not just me because I'm stu not smart enough, not with, not, nobody, to write a program that will correctly say yes, you're going to stop all the times you're supposed to say yes, and say no, you're supposed to stop all the times you're supposed to say no. Um, and when I say anyone, I really do mean anyone. It's not like we're waiting for future awesome, the Mozart of programming to come and be really, really good at fixing these problems. We're not just too stupid to solve it. We can show that it really, really can't be solved. We're not waiting for faster computers or bigger hard drives or more memory or anything like that. It really, really can't be solved. We're not waiting for new funky tools to help us write better programs or software or programming languages or whatever else. Really, really can't be solved. And if you think about it, that's a big deal, right? It's a big deal to say never. It's a big deal to say not now, not later, no matter how smart you are, no matter how fast computers get, because computers have gotten, you know, back in my day, I was in the, the Commodore 64 era, where, you know, 64 kilobytes was an awesome amount of RAM. Um, and I'm saying from then to now, from now to the future, from the future to, you know, spaceships traveling around through Mars, can't be done. So, um, as a little semi-technical digression, let me kind of tell you why. Imagine somebody did write this program. Um, then they come up to you and say, look at me, I'm awesome. Sean, that idiot, you know, doesn't know what he's talking about. I proved him wrong. Here's my program. I wrote, and I see, I'll see if you ever stop Verifier. The job of this program is to look at some other program. It's going to check and see whether that program ever, ever stops. Okay? So you load it with a file. You see if that program ever stops. And it tells you, yes, it'll stop. It'll stop. And it'll tell you, no, it won't stop. It'll run forever. If it'll run forever. Um, I don't care how it works. What I'm going to do is basically say whoever told you they have this program is either lying or wrong. 
um, by being a big jerk and creating my evil program. <laughs> my evil program is going to be called evil.exe. <laughs> <laughs> my evil program, the first thing it does is ask that verifier that you say exists, that you just handed to me, and I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Verifier, you said you could tell if any program out in the entire universe whether that program would stop or not. How about evil.exe? Is that program going to stop or not? And so the verifier has two choices. The verifier can say, yeah, it'll stop eventually, in which case I'm going to write evil.exe in such a way that when it comes back and says yes, I'm going to have basically a loop that says, you're wrong, you're wrong, ha ha, ha ha, you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> So if it says you're going to stop, I'm going to write the program in such a way that it uses the information from the verifier to make it wrong. Similarly, if it comes back and says, no, you'll run forever, what I'll do is say, thanks for the information. I'm done. Stop. So basically what I'm doing is I'm writing a program that makes the verifier be wrong no matter what it tells me. And since I wrote this program in five minutes, the verifier can't even work on this thing. It probably can't, it certainly can't exist on whole lots of stuff. Okay. And the basic problem is anybody that writes this kind of verifier that wants to know whether a program is going to stop or not stop needs to be able to predict the future, and we're not good at that. Um, so no matter what the verifier says, I can make it incorrect. Since this will work with any verifier program, I didn't depend on how it worked. I didn't care about how long it took. This thing could have took five minutes. It could have taken five years. I didn't care about what kind of computer you ran it on. You can do whatever you want. I just care whether you told me yes or no. Okay? Then. Any verifier program is going to have this problem, and any verifier program will not be able to tell whether my evil program will run forever or not because I'm a big jerk who made it a liar. Um, so these undecidable problems come up in a lot, a lot of places. There's, it's not just whether your, your machine's hanging or not. Um, it's usually undecidable to create a program that will tell you anything about another program. And these things come up in a lot of security-related situations. So for example, wouldn't it be nice if someone would write a program to tell you if that awesome game you just downloaded from no really it's not a virus.com is going to crash your hard drive? Wouldn't it be nice if somebody said, bing, don't do that, that's going to kill you. <laughs> Sorry, that's undecidable, same kind of thing. Um, wouldn't it be nice if someone would write a program that would tell you if your computer is currently running a Trojan horse that would make you post the I'm a little teapot song on your Facebook wall next Friday night? Or send an email to your significant other saying how much you think they look fat? Or send your uh, personal information to Nigerian finance ministers? Or anything like that? Can we search your hard drive and see if any of that stuff will happen just by looking at the computer? No, that's undecidable. Wouldn't it be nice if someone would write a program to tell you if your bank is running a program that would accidentally erase your account the next time you do a deposit? Sorry, we had a computer glitch. Or you can replace bank running your program that will accidentally erase your account with NORAD running a program that will accidentally launch nuclear missiles. Can we look at a program and see whether that'll happen or not? Sorry, that's undecidable. Wouldn't it be nice if someone write a program that would tell you if any program out there ever in the whole universe does what it says it does? Some program that says, hey, you promised you'd solve this problem. You promised you'd take these inputs and turn it to these outputs. Do you do what you say you do, or do you have bugs? Sorry, that's undecidable. Bummer. Um, <laughs> lots and lots of things that are really, would be really nice to have are really undecidable. So when I say undecidable, remember that means nobody can write these programs. It's not that we're a bunch of lazy, stupid idiots over in the computer science department. Nobody can do it now or in the future. Um, the problem isn't how slow, relatively speaking, computers are versus what they're going to be. The problem isn't how much memory we have now versus how much memory we're going to have later. Um, we're not waiting for new technologies. We're not waiting for new kinds of computers. If you've ever heard of quantum computers, um, which people are trying to make exist, and that's a whole other rant. Um, <laughs> Quantum computers, if and when they come, will be very good at making slow things fast. They're not going to be able to make impossible things possible. Um, so we're screwed, you ask me? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really. <laughs> we can prove these things mathematically, and these, these are kind of mathematical facts the same way the Pythagorean theorem is a mathematical fact. Really? Well, um, there's a couple of things that I'm kind of hiding from you. 
This, so here's the definition of undecidability again. It's impossible for anyone to write a program that will correctly say yes all the times it's supposed to say yes, and no all the times it's supposed to say no. Here's what I really should be saying. Say yes all the time, it's supposed to say yes with 100% accuracy. And say no all the time, it's supposed to say no with 100% accuracy. Um, the way I've said these things were undecidable and didn't exist but was by creating one program where it didn't work on. Theoretically, it's not true, but theoretically, that could be the only program in the entire universe that would screw that verifier up, right? Um, but it is true that what we're really talking about here is 100% correctness, and if you can get to 99.99% .99 correctness, undecidability has nothing to say about that. Undecidability is really a binary proposition. Either you're really always right or you're sometimes wrong, and as far as we're concerned, sometimes wrong is just as bad whether you're almost always right or almost always wrong. Um, it's theoretically possible, but hard, to create a program that's correct most of the time, for some definition of most. Um, the rest of the time, it'll either be wrong or say, eh. um, So, but in a security situation, when you're writing virus checkers, when you're writing a secure system, when you want to make sure nobody hacks into NORAD and launches nuclear missiles, that does create an exploitable hole. So, um, I don't know how to measure 99.99% accuracy because I don't know what that means relative to people trying to create programs to attack you or anything like that. So we can talk about being able to solve most of the problems and it's better than nothing, but anytime you have a known flaw in your system, you have a known hole for people to come through your system. Um, so the other thing I, I'm kind of hiding here, here's the definition again. It's impossible for anyone to write a program that will correctly say yes all the time I'm supposed to say yes and no all the time I'm supposed to say no. Um, what I should be saying is on all possible input programs. This is another variant of the 100% accuracy. Um, what I'm trying to say here is it's possible but hard to write a program that specially checks certain kinds of programs. Um, you actually do see this in the real world for real safety critical things, medical software, things that fly planes and rocket ships and things like that. Um, for, it's easier if you restrict the kinds of commands the program can do. It's pretty easy to verify your program won't erase your hard drive if you look at every single instruction in the entire program and none of them ever touch your disk. That kind of stuff. So if we kind of cripple the operations, we can say if no dangerous operations happen, then no dangerous, no dangerous operations can happen and you're safe. That kind of thing. But um, it's theoretically possible, but even harder to design a different special purpose checker for each program you're worried about. And this is kind of where we're at now in um, verification stuff. We kind of hack up a special case verification program on each thing we want to check and we have to kind of cripple down each thing we want to check so that the kind of undecidable parts aren't in there. Um, but if we do this, keep doing this over and over and over again, that's a lot of programs. There's lots of programs out there now. There's lots of programs being written in the future. Um, having to write a special purpose verifier for every single one of them is a lot of verifiers, and then you get into trouble with who verifies the verifier, and you go down that rabbit hole, and all kinds of stuff like that. And there'll still exist some programs that you can't be checked. I don't think you can even define a special purpose verifier for my evil program, because what's it gonna do, right? It's gonna say yes or say no, and I'm gonna make it wrong. So there's certain programs that can't be verified no matter what. So you can do the special purpose thing for some programs, hopefully the ones that matter, but not for it, but you can't even special purpose every possible problem. So here I am, Captain Bringdown, to kind of give you guys the message, which is there are some problems that can't be solved. This is, I guess I'd call it the speed of light for computer science. You can't fly faster than the speed of light. You can't solve certain kinds of problems in computer science. Um, not now, not ever. There's no such thing as 100% security, especially 100% automated security. Anybody who says they have a perfect secure system, you should start thinking about the Titanic <laughs> and how we didn't need to put lifeboats on the unsinkable ship. There's no such thing as an unsinkable ship. There's no such thing as a totally secure system. Um, software bugs are a fact of life and they're not going away. And it's not that we're bad people, or not just that we're bad people. Um, they are we can't fix them. We, we can do our best to try to get rid of them, we can do our best to minimize them, but they're always going to be there and there's no way to automatically remove them all. And as a computer person, I'm here to say sorry. So. <laughs> Thank you.